Back in Jonesboro, Arkansas, Rob Nikoleski along with Dan Gustin and Jeff Horton on the sideline. Talked to our man on the sideline, Paul Stewart, a little while ago. Paul? And Rob, considering the circumstances, the halftime speech was relatively low-key. Coach Horton just stressed that, hey, this is Nevada football. We've been in this position before, and we will come back, not we may come back. As far as uh, the defense, coordinator Ken Mizell said simply, we're going to make an adjustment. We're going to tackle. <laughs> Well, that's pretty well said. One word, tackle, that's right. Yeah, and, and that's a good point because this has been very simple football. It's not a complex issue. The Wolfpack has to play better. Vargas on first down. Throws for his intended receiver. Hit him right in the face, man. Right in. Zeke Moore turned around. When he turned around, the ball hit him right in the mask, right in the face. He didn't see it coming. Vargas on a little too quick account. Well, Zeke turned a little bit too late, but also, once again, Arkansas State's defense forces Vargas to throw the ball a little too quickly. Vargas had to get the ball off to keep the defensive players out of his face. Watch this. Here's he's got some pressure. He throws, turns and throws, and Zeke just not ready. Boing, right off the helmet. Vargas on second and ten. Little swing pass out of the backfield. Right side to Moore. Lowers his head and gets to the 37-yard line. The difference right there, I think a good illustration. Delray Stevens came over and made the hit. When he make a hit, they make a stop. And the difference in it, who's your friend, Ron? Well, we got a we got a B up here. Is that a wasp? Yeah, we got a B up here in the booth. But uh, but our problems are relatively minor compared to those of the Wolfpack. Man, Nevada's gotten stung by their bad tackling or lack of same. Nevada now have a third and still long, third and near eight. Vargas to throw for the third time. Matter with a sure-handed catch at midfield at the 45, they rock him and bring him down. <laughs> So he has been the release man, the safety valve. They have not gone to the big play receivers much today. Those being Michael Stevens and uh, Mike Sr. Nice catch here by Tom Matter. I've uh, got a uh, partial score to give you. Utah State leads New Mexico State 3-0 in the first quarter. That's at New Mexico State. If New Mexico State wins, strangely enough, New Mexico State goes to the Las Vegas Bowl. Brandon Llewellyn made the stop. Zeke Moore running left. Got a good block from Valentin. Spun. Fumble. Fumble. And it... Who got it? Tommy Matter, I believe. Boy, Tommy Matter has been the crucial guy in this drive for the Wolfpack, coming up with a third down and eight reception, and then Zeke Moore fumbling the ball technically for the second time in this game. The first time the referees didn't call a fumble. That time the ball pops out, and Tom Matter keeps the drive alive, and every little thing like that for the Wolfpack needs to go Nevada's way. Down by 10 points, they can't afford any more mistakes. They've made way too many at, at, at this rate. After the recovery by Matter, it's second and less than a yard to go for a first down, so a free down for Vargas. At the Indians, 35-yard line. Diedrich Holmes on the ground, stumbles to the 30-yard line. He'll have more than enough for the first down. Here's how the ball got loose, not got knocked loose on that last play by Zeke Moore. Here comes Arkansas State's defensive help, and there's a good pop by Arkansas State's Dale Carpenter out of Memphis. He sticks his hat in, knocks the ball loose, but Tom Matter is able to pick up the ball, keep the drive alive. Nevada at the 30-yard line of A State. Vargas on a first down, wants to throw. Arm fake, he's got plenty of room to run left. He throws for the end zone. The ball knocked away. Matter was there, but a great defensive play. The guy you're just talking about, Dale Carpenter, the linebacker had dropped off, and Vargas didn't throw it long enough, and Carter made a whale of a play. John Bobo on the sidelines. On that play, Arkansas State was really caught in between a rock and a hard place. Vargas could have rolled out and could have run for 20 yards, but as he ran up, he thought he saw Carpenter take a step up, and then he threw to his roommate, Tom Matter, and the pass got deflected nicely, nicely, nicely done here by Carpenter. The ball underthrown, and again, you could see as the ball was going downfield, there was nobody between Vargas and the goal line. He had all kinds of room to run. Speaking of running, Diedrich Holmes on the ground will get about three. They'll bring up a third and seven as he gets to the 27-yard line. Arkansas State, in case you joined us late, just got in here after halftime, is leading 17 to seven. It's twice this afternoon they have had a 10-point lead. They were on top 10 nothing, and the Wolfpack scored, narrowed the gap to 10-7. Then on the last play from scrimmage before halftime, a batted ball, a missed tackle, and Arkansas State had a 54-yard throw and run for a touchdown. We'll see if Vargas can convert another third down situation. The pack needs to get in the end zone. Vargas looking for protection. Throws on a little curl. Left side is complete at the 18-yard line to Mike Sr. 
That should be enough. They needed to get to the 20. They got a little market now at the 19 yard line. Get a good shot at Mike Sr. who was not expected to play a lot this afternoon because he has kind of a gimpy ankle. We thought we'd see more of Dan Zamora, but have not. Sr. turns the uh, up route, comes back for the ball, gets the first down. And adds a few more yards. He needs 110 to get to 1,000. The guy who tackled him, Stacy Crockett, is the guy we mentioned earlier. He's been on senior all afternoon. Diedrich Holmes caught in the backfield. Ed Rufus. Somebody tie that guy up. He is in the Wolfpack backfield all afternoon. Shot a gap, and he was in Holmes' face before Diedrich could get anything going. Ed Rufus is playing a terrific game. And we've seen a lot of good Big West players on our coverage here on News Channel A. Guys like Tremaine Younger, other players from Utah State. But uh, Ed Rufus has impressed me more than any other player I have seen. He read it very quickly and very well when he saw the guards pull. You saw Mike Bro at the end of that play out in front trying to lead a convoy. But Rufus had snuck in behind, and nobody had sealed him off, and he made a big play. And now it's second and 14 after the four-yard loss. A little bit reminiscent of the Southern Illinois game. And that's a delay of game penalty. The Wolfpack was confused offensively, and now they're going to be backed up five more yards. I remember, Rob, we went to Carbondale. It was a little different in terms of the circumstance because the weather was bad and it was raining, but the defensive line for the Salukis of Southern Illinois, they were finding those seams, those gaps all afternoon. They were raising havoc in the Wolfpack backfield. That's what the Indians are doing this afternoon so far. Ed Rufus has been the main guy. He's been the main cog. You've seen very few delay of game penalties this year for the Wolfpack. I think this is only about the second one I can recall seeing because when you got a senior quarterback like Vargas, you don't see that very often. Second and 19. He wants to go for a bundle, throwing up the middle to uh, Stevens. Touchdown. Michael Stevens in the air at the goal line. Comes down with it. And Chris Vargas, he was pushed back two times, and he strikes right back. A 28-yarder to Michael Stevens for the touchdown. Now Nevada, with the conversion, will be once again within three. And Michael Stevens strikes a pose after catching this touchdown pass. Vargas steps up. And the pack has not gone deep on a vertical, straight-up route like this very often in this game, but he makes a terrific catch, Stevens does, and a terrific throw by Vargas. With the extra point by Avina upcoming. He kicks it, and it is good. We have a flag down. That'll give us an opportunity before we take a break. After that play, I don't think we saw it on camera, but Brian Reeves came sprinting on the field. He was excited, and Horton went out and got him. We'll talk more about when we come back. It is a 17 to 14 game. Arkansas State leading the Wolfpack. We'll return to Jonesboro after this timeout. Let's give this a try. Slots, blackjack, craps, roulette, keno. All right. The entertainment is incredible. I have to see a show. Incredible. I have to see a show. El Dorado. El Dorado, it's a winner. Who's number one? Reno Jeep Eagle. With low prices on 94 Jeep Cherokees, classic Jeep Wranglers, or how about a new 94 Grand Cherokee? Reno Jeep Eagle, first in sales and service. My Jeep works for me. And so does Reno Jeep Eagle. You know, this Grand Cherokee's perfect for us. Thanks, Reno Jeep. Join our growing list of satisfied customers. Reno Jeep Eagle. You'll save more on meal. Yes, you will. Back in Jonesboro, Arkansas, Rob Nikoleski and Dan Gustin. You want to see a perfectly thrown ball and a perfect catch? How about this one? Chris Vargas, 28 yards to Michael Stevens. Vargas lays it up there where no one except the guy in the white uniform can catch it. Stevens makes a terrific catch, and the cut, the, the uh, Arkansas State lead has been cut to 17-14. Here's another look. Armando Avina kicks it off and out of the end zone as he nails the kickoff. But I started to say earlier before that break, Brian Reeves is not dressed this afternoon. He is in street clothes on the sideline. And he came running off the sideline on a beeline towards the end zone. And he was tackled, stopped by Jeff Horton before he got there. Otherwise, they'd have had a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, so far, the Wolfpack has scored two touchdowns. Here's a scoring drive in the last possession, 65 yards. The Wolfpack has scored two touchdowns in this game. And has not been called for one penalty afterwards, which is, I think, the first time we've seen two in a row of that this year. 
At their 20 yard line Arkansas State will start first and 10. Covington on the ground was favorite man Williams good running room looking to get outside he does turn the corner at the 25 and gets very close to the first down. Hassan had his hands on her wrapped around him and still Williams found a way to squirm away from that tackle for three or four more yards. But also Williams got some great blocking right at the line of scrimmage. Arkansas State did a nice job of sealing off the linebackers sealing off the defensive lineman. Watch this Andy Boo gets sealed off there. Steve Bryant gets turned around and Mar and Marquise Williams picks up another big gain. He will get enough for the first down. They'll spot it right at the 30 yard line. Look at that 154 yards. He needs one yard to get his thousand. He's got that and more as he is at the 35 yard line. He came in with 845 yards. He's got a thousand yards. And a little bit more than that. Steve Bryant makes the stop. Here's one more t one more look at Marquise Williams. Look at the way this guy's built. He's not tall, but he's very strong, and he's got good speed, so strong that he's able to break tackles. And there, he was able to run right past Clayton Lopez. Prototypical back, too, leaning forward. That's right, he's a natural freshman, majoring in biology, and he's dissecting the Wolfpack offense. Or defense, excuse me. At the 40, look at him just tiptoe his way through all the way to the 45-yard line. This guy is going to give Big West teams a lot of problems for a long time. Once again, ASU picks up the first down. And what makes this guy valuable is you know, he's got pretty good breakaway speed, but he's also a tough inside runner as well. There's a guy that you could, who can get to the tough yards and can also break away for a 20 or 30 yard gain. Well, you mentioned the fact back in the first half that he uh, in high school was a track man, but not only a sprinter, was a weight man, and you can see that in his upper body. He punishes people. Clayton Lopez made the last stop, and Clayton was bent over backwards when he brought him down. Again, Williams running right side. This time, they gang tackle him after only a short gain of two. It looked like Jim Jones jumped off sides, but uh, for once, the, the lineman who has been very busy, at least he was in the first half, throwing flags on illegal procedure and offsides call. He kept uh, the flag in his pocket. Looked to me like 95 Jones jumped off sides. You know, we just get a good look now at Marquise Williams. Physically, he looks a lot like LaShawn Johnson from uh, Northern Illinois. And he runs like him, too. Actually, against the Wolfpack, a lot better because they, they limited LaShawn to 92 yards. Couldn't stop the passing game that afternoon in Mackey Stadium. I think Nevada was the only team that's kept uh, You're right. LaShawn Johnson under 100 yards. He destroyed Iowa a couple weeks ago. Again, Frank Marvitz that time jumped offside. And the flags are down. As Williams coming at midfield, he bounces off the tackle. And finally, they drag him down. Steve Bryant was hanging on. He was hanging on for dear life, and he needed help. And Bryant is a big, tough, physical guy. But once again, another offside penalty from the Wolfpack. I don't know why they're so jumpy today. But watch, watch the leg drive here by Marquise Williams. This guy is a horse. He is someone that you can just put your offensive load onto his back and let him ride. Darnell Hassan, see ya, just rips right past him. Garnett Overby trying to hang on. Garnett's like, give me some help, fellas. Yeah, it was Overby. I thought it was Steve Bryant. I saw 92 there, but it was Overby, so that's a little bit of a mismatch. But it was Frank Marvitz who was offside, number 58. You saw him in the backfield early and when Stacy Harrell kicked him out. As it, turns, as it turns out, the offside penalty has declined because Williams had such an effective run. You think he needs that water bottle? He'll spend some time in the uh, hot tub tomorrow as well. He'll be feeling pretty sore, but so far, upon this young man's wide shoulders, Arkansas State is riding a three-point lead over heavily favored Nevada. Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Johnny Covington gives to Freeman the backup, and Andy Booth tags him right away and wraps him up. Bernie Chapman with some help. Marquise Williams, a true freshman out of Louisiana, Baton Rouge. And he is the main reason why Arkansas State has a three-point lead over the Nevada Wolfpack. Well, he scored both touchdowns. The only one he hasn't scored was the field goal. Got a seven-yard run, then a 54-yard completion, his first collegiate completion. First catch he's made. Freeman got a yard. It is second and nine. 
Williams still on the sideline, getting a breather. They go to Freeman again, pitch him right, he cuts back. Well, there you can see the difference between uh, Freeman and Williams. Freeman's an average Big West back, and he's able to tiptoe his way through for about four yards. But Williams, on a similar play, would probably drive forward for about three more yards. That's the difference between a very good, strong back and just an average back. Jeff Condra wrapped him up around the waist and hung on and rode Freeman down. And Condra is a running specialist. He's a guy who's very tough against the run. So that'll bring up another third down situation. This time, third and four. Think they're going to get the ball to number 20? Yeah, it would be a pretty good guess. He runs to the short side of the field, the right side. They got a jersey, a second one. They finally get him down. Chapman hauls him down. He got him about the ankle, slid down, and hit him on the ankles. And that's where he lost his balance. You hold your breath every time Williams gets the ball because he. He gets hit near the line of scrimmage just about every time, but he's able to break tackles. And Bernie Chapman got him by a fingernail just about, just enough to keep him just a little bit off balance. And Williams is able to stumble, fall, and not get the first down. It'll be fourth down. Kenny Mizell with his headset. You got a quick glimpse of him talking to a special team out there, his punt return team, as you get a look at Overby. He's replacing Brian Reeves, who is not in uniform this afternoon. If you missed that part of our telecast, he got a separated shoulder on Wednesday. Should be ready to play if there's another game in the Wolfpack future this year, but he's not going to play this afternoon. And also Marcellus Krishan has not played if he just joined us. He's got an injured knee. He will be ready to play if and when there's a bowl game. Richardson, two punts, one for 52, the other one for 15. That was the last one. Good snap to him. He has time. Right footer got into that one. Hangs it high and it bounces and uh, does it get in the end zone? No, they save it. Oh, right job. on the goal line. What a play. That was number 24, Freddie Wilson, who did a tightrope act right on the goal line. Did a terrific job to keep the ball out of the end zone. We've got a break. 17-14, Arkansas State leads over the Wolfpack. We return. The pack will have it at their one-yard line. We'll be back to Jonesboro after this timeout. He said he's getting both ankles taped. That's why it's taking a long time. But Senior will be back and playing on those ankles. Mike Senior trying to get 110 yards reception to try to uh, become the third Wolfpack wide receiver to gain 1,000 yards in receiving. But more importantly, he needs to get back in the game to help the Wolfpack pull out a win. There's the guy. Nine comebacks so far when his team trailed by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. He's got to have some magic this afternoon from his own one-yard line. Holmes runs it out to the three. No magic on that play. That was simple, good up front tackling by Arkansas State. Standing Diedrich Holmes up and dropping him down after about a gain of one. You don't think that Vargas has created this dramatics to come back on the road to make this happen, do you? I don't think so. I think Varg and everybody else wanted to have a nice, easy day, rack up some nice statistics, sit back and hope that uh, Mexico State can lose and that UNLV can somehow upset southwestern Louisiana. Second and about nine. Vargas from the end zone throws as he's hit incomplete at the five-yard line. Boy, again, Rufus. 99 meet number 10. They have been together dancing all afternoon. Yeah, slam dancing. 99, Ed Rufus comes in. Look at this. He's got two men guarding him. I'm sorry, that's not Ed Rufus. The guy who forced that play was Dale Carpenter, number 37, who's also had a very fine game. Rufus was in the vicinity, but it was 37, Dale Carpenter, who came in from his linebacker spot. And he's the one who slammed down with Vargas. So now third and still long. Yeah, I thought it was Rufus, too. He was there. Maybe uh, just a reaction. He's been there so much this afternoon, but it was Carpenter who's also had a big afternoon. Knocked the ball down at the goal line against Tom Matter. Here goes Vargas to throw again. Nice lofting pass out of the 15 to Tom Matter who turns around and reaches back to make the catch. That's a very sure-handed grab by Tom Matter. You know, this a play like this has got to be so frustrating for Arkansas State because they played good, solid defense on this play, but this is a perfectly thrown ball. This is how a guy like Chris Vargas can just kill you defensively. Here he throws this ball where only Tom Matter can catch it. Matter, who's so sure-handed, makes the grab. 
and the Wolfpack gets a big first down and gets out of a hole. Yeah, Beeson was the, the up man, the linebacker, and he couldn't get there. A bullet thrown right side to Michael Stevens off his hands and it's complete as a flag flies in front of him. Well, as many points as we've had here, we thought we'd see a lot more scoring in the Utah-New Mexico State game in Las Cruces, but New, Mex New Mexico State trailing 3 nothing against Utah State. That is in the second quarter. Mike Stevens, Michael Stevens normally very sure-handed. Vargas threw the ball with some zip. And Stevens not able to hang on to it. It bounces off his fingertips. And it'll be second and ten. Well, we'll see what the penalty is first. Rob, this is one of those games with the University of Nevada. They are not playing well. So to be good, you don't only have to play well. You have to be lucky. And they're going to have to find some luck somewhere. And also, you can't afford to make any more mistakes. As a legal man downfield. So the ball will be marked off against Nevada. But to continue my point, you can't make any more mistakes. Because, again... We keep going back to the Weaver State game. We keep going back to the Northern Illinois game. In both those games, there were times when you thought the Wolfpack was taking charge, and then they didn't. They, there would be a crucial turnover, a fluke play like we've seen in this game, and that can turn things around. Now it's first and 15. Vargas under center under Ryan O'Donnell then checks off and wants to change the play. Back from his five-yard line, throws an underneath, uh, underneath release pass to Michael Stevens. He's tackled by Lawson right away at the 17-yard line. You know, we were talking about how Vargas can be an effective quarterback. He threw a crucial third down pass to Tom Matter. Well, here, this is another example why Vargas is so good. He's not looking for the, the man he eventually throws the ball to first. He's looking for other receivers. He looks them off, can't find anyone open, finds Michael Stevens, is able to pick up some yardage. So Vargas with 204 yards passing, but those aren't the most important numbers. The most important numbers with under two minutes to go in the third quarter are on the scoreboard. Arkansas State still leading. They led all the way. They're on top 17-14. Little release pass to Diedrich, Diedrich Holmes. He lowers his head over the 20 to the 22-yard line, forced out of bounds, and he'll be short of the first down. Another third down situation for Vargas and the Wolfpack. They started this drive back on their own one-yard line. And Vargas swings his pass out to Diedrich. Wolfpack offense operating on, on less than all eight cylinders with Reeves out and Krishan out. Delray Stevens, number 50, makes the stop on home. Vargas now with a third and six. The ball near his 22-yard line. He's changing the play, but he's got plenty of time to snap the ball. Seven seconds left on the play clock. Another three-step drop, an arm fake. Comes back again to his release valve. The tight end, Matter. Matter with good running after the catch. Did not have the first down when he made the catch. When he turned inside, though, across the 30 to the 33-yard line, made sure he had enough for the first down, which he gets and moves the sticks. Where Tommy Matter has been the go-to guy in crucial situations for the Wolfpack today. With Brian Reeves out, Vargas again goes back to throw. He's looking to his left, looking to his left, looking for Sean Price. Can't find him, and he finds his buddy Tom Matter open for another first down and another third down conversion. Well, we've got an update on the score. New Mexico State 7, Utah State 3. That's the beginning of the second quarter. And remember, if New Mexico State wins, regardless what happens here, regardless what happens in uh, UNLV, New Mexico State will go to the Vegas Bowl. Again, Diedrich Holmes looks inside, goes wide outside, and he does a header over the 40-yard line. Holmes running hard, trying to punish the defense as much as he's been punished this afternoon. A brief correction, we understand it's 6-3 to three in favor of New Mexico State. I guess they missed the extra point. 6-3, New Mexico State over Utah State. That's in the second quarter. Get a good look at Holmes looking inside. Had enough speed to get outside, and boy, then he gets airborne and lands on his backside. Okay, another correction. Seven to six, New Mexico State. Mexico State leads Utah State seven to six. That Vargas is the correct score. Vargas with a long throw across the field to John Achabi, complete out near the 45-yard line before he's driven back by Brad Davis. And that's the end of the third quarter. That is it, 17-14, Arkansas State leads. We have 15 minutes of football left, and for the Wolfpack, a chance to play another game should they win this one. We'll return to Jordansboro after this timeout. Now of having this game tied. By the way, a tie does them no good. Vargas on first down. 
Scrambles, got running room. Nice move. Boy, nice move that time. He stepped inside Michael Beeson. Yeah, Chris isn't known for being the fleetest of foot, but he made a nice move here, and Beeson lost his footing on the wet track. Take a look at this. Vargas has thought about running a couple of times this game and has not, but this time he decides to tuck the ball under, make the move on Beeson, and pick up about eight yards. At the 47-yard line, Arkansas State, Diedrich Holmes sliding safely into second base and covered by, by Rufus. Well, what Holmes started out and then no footing at all. Well, what the uh, slippery turf gives, it also takes away. Beeson slipped on the previous play and let Vargas gain eight yards. This time, Diedrich Holmes slips for the Wolfpack and he loses a couple. Now it'll be third down, another third down. We'll see if Vargas can convert on his third straight third down conversion of this drive. In the third quarter, Chris Vargas completed nine of 12 passes, one for a touchdown. Vargas, three-step drop, throws to Dan Zamora. First catch of the afternoon. He'll have enough for the first down out at the 42-and-a-half yard line. We haven't heard anything from Dan, but he makes his first catch here, and Vargas completes his third, third down conversion of this drive. It started back on the one-yard line. Here's another look at Dan Zamora. The Wolfpack uh, coaches think this guy could be a pretty good receiver for the next couple of years. Again, Crockett, the guy on him that pushed him out of bounds. Mike Sr. has returned to the lineup. He's way up the top of your screen now. The wide guy on that two-man set right of the formation. Vargas wants to throw again. Threw into heavy traffic. Nice catch by Price. A flag is down. He's got a blocker in front of him, Tom Matter. And Price run out of bounds near the 10-yard line. Let's see what that flag's all about. What's it with it with Sammy Bell? After Bell knocked him out, he went and pushed Price again. Now Vargas completing seven in a row on this drive. But is that going to come back? Matt Araldi uh, is gesturing like, oh, no, not again. So it is against the Wolfpack. Pass and there, And there's another flag down. I believe Vargas said something as, as he passed the referee. And another flag went down. I think that's going to be for unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, I'm guess, guessing here, but I'm, I'm saying the call was on Tom Matter on pass interference, but it, from that replay, it certainly didn't look like he interfered with the defense. It looked like three defensive players ran into one another. And Vargas goes to the sideline to talk to Jeff Horton, and Vargas walked by the official, and his head wasn't turned toward the official. I think he said something literally in passing. The official overheard him, threw a flag, and I think we're going to have a 30-yard penalty against Nevada when all this is added up. The passing yard is certainly in favor of Nevada, but right now the scoreboard is not. They trail by three. There's plenty of time remaining. You can see how frustrated Vargas is. He kicked the turf, and, and Vargas is usually one of the one of the most relaxed, laid-back guys you'd ever see. He's very competitive. Don't take that laid-back attitude for the fact that he doesn't care. You know, talk about laid-back attitude. On the plane ride out here yesterday, Vargas was sound asleep in one of the seats, and his head was over on Mike Maxwell, his backup shoulder. And I was sitting next to Jeff Horton, and Horton says, boy, let's hope a little osmosis takes place. And that brain power, that thing that's, that gray matter that's in Vargas, somehow seeps into Maxwell for next year. Well, apparently Vargas, though, lost his temper, said something to the referee, and now the Wolfpack is in a first down and 40. <laughs> oh, boy. This is when they're most dangerous, though. New Mexico State found out that last week. Nevada's been penalized nine times for 65 yards. Two penalties for 30 on one play. So Vargas definitely going to the air. Underneath, throws complete at the 35. That is Zeke Moore will get it all the way out to the 47-yard line, so he'll get a chunk of it back. Well, there's about 20. They're halfway there, and it's second down. Vargas goes back. Again, looking for his receivers on the right, looking for Mike Senior, who's in the game. He's covered, so he dumps it off to Zeke Moore. He's a tough guy to defend, this Chris Vargas. Lawson and uh, Beeson make the stop, the two backers. Vargas now with second and still plenty long, second and near 20. Wants to scramble, throws. Matter with a diving grab. He's back to the original line of scrimmage at about the 42-yard line. And there's 10 more for Tom Matter. You know, uh, Dan, th throughout this season, the Wolfpack has, has had a very solid, good season. Seven wins, three losses, but no no games, it seems, ever come easy for this team. No matter with seven catches this afternoon. 
42 coming into the game. He has 85 total yards. Just about what he averages. Third and 10. Again, Vargas looking to throw. Throws the long out complete to Sean Price, and he's out of bounds near the 25-yard line. He'll have enough for the first down. You know, you have to laugh I mean, ju just in admiration of this offense. First and 40, 20 yards, 10 yards. We'll let throw another 12-yard pass, and Vargas finds Sean Price in the Wolfpack, even though they were in a first and, tw first and 40 situation, ends up with a first down as Sean Price and one of the uh, Arkansas State players doing a little shoving at the end of the play. So Nevada now at the 26 yard line. Vargas four times in a row throws and completes four in a row. This one to Sean Price again at the 21 yard line. Chris is in that rhythm. You can feel it. And you've seen it so many times throughout his career in uh, fourth quarter situations. It's just, Marcus plays a lot of golf and he loves to play golf. And sometimes golfers get into a zone where you hit every shot and you know you're going to hit it smooth. And right now, Marcus is in, a, is in a rhythm on this football field. He's going back, taking three steps, looking one way, looking the other, finding a man. Brad Davis makes the stop, and that's what I think I have appreciated most about Arkansas State today. They are sure tacklers. They grab you and you come down. Again, Vargas to throw. Steps up. Throws. Zamora drops, and we have a flag at the line of scrimmage. Zamora had separated from Crockett. Looked like he was open, but couldn't hang on. Vargas, again, could have run and probably picked up the first down, but he made the right decision to throw the ball to Dan Zamora, but Dan was just simply not able to hang on to the ball. This is a great angle from the end zone. You can see that Vargas might have been able to run for a few yards, but Zamora was the man to go to. He threw it to him, and Dan just didn't hang on to the ball. A couple other numbers for Chris Vargas. He's 14 of 18 in this half. He has now tied the stadium record with 28 completions. It shows you they don't pass the ball a lot here, but 28 completions on the afternoon, so surely he'll break the stadium record before this is over. Well, I guess even if Zamora had hung on to the ball, it wouldn't have counted because there's a holding penalty against Nevada. Now that just revs up their offense. First and 40, they make it. Now they are second and, what, 17 or so? At the 32-yard line of Arkansas State, Jonesboro, what a beautiful landscape as we look out across the stadium and across the, to the Crowley uh, Mountain Range. Again, Vargas, arm fit. Look, he's got all kinds of time. Throws deep, throws into coverage. Oh, boy, lucky he wasn't intercepted. In and out of the hands of Brandon Llewellyn, who turned around. I guess he got a little dizzy doing that 360, and Brandon trots back to the huddle because he was the most wide-open man in the end zone. Well, we've seen consecutive drops. On the previous play, Dan Zamora drops the ball. Here, Sean Price turns one way. Vargas thought he was going the other. And Brandon Llewellyn right in the breadbasket. Yeah, Llewellyn, I got it, I got it. I don't got it. Third and 17 now, and this might be four down territory, Dan, because yep. uh, Avina's leg is not strong, and this would be about a 50-yard field goal if this pass goes incomplete. Chris Vargas looking for a receiver. Has one, but a nice play by Crockett. Stacy Crockett with that left hand knocks it away from Sean Price. And now, as you said, is this four down territory? I think it is. Price trots back out. Here comes Price, and uh, as you said, Stacy Crockett makes a nice play. Marcus threw this ball a little bit late. By the time he was able to find Price, Crockett was able to recover. One Look at more that left look hand. at it. Yeah, what a play. He's been a good defensive back all afternoon. He has the interception early. He outjumped Michael Stevens for the ball. Well, so Nevada. Well, thanks going to go for it. Fourth down. Vargas with three receivers at the bottom of your screen. He's got fourth and an awful long way, but that would be as good as a punt even if he doesn't get a first down. Throws. Ball knocked away and incomplete. A for Price. Watkins was the guy that made sure, but it was again. Stacy Crockett, who got a hand on it, but there's Watkins. He made sure that Price didn't hang on. There's a look at this as the Wolfpack drive comes to an end. The holding penalty on second down was a crucial was a crucial one because it put the Wolfpack out of field goal range. We'll return after this timeout. This is Custom Glass. Local homes and businesses that have received custom treatment. 
to your grocery receipt. Jeff Horton on the sidelines here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. I'm Rob Nikoleski along with Dan Gustin as the Wolfpack finds itself down by three points against Arkansas State. And the Indians have the ball. Covington, the quarterback, and you think they're going to run the ball a lot on this series, Dan? It'd be a pretty good guess. 12 first downs by way of run out of the 14 so far this afternoon, and I guess wrong. Covington wants to throw. He's getting greedy. Throws incomplete, and that's not... Again, you want to use some clock. Granted, there are more than 11 minutes to go, but Derek Austin was there. Had the pass been there, it would have been a good call. And uh, Covington has had receivers open at times. And that time, Austin definitely had a step on the Wolfpack secondary, but Covington was not able to get him the ball. You said that Arkansas State's been running the ball so effectively. John Bobo's team has 14 first downs, 12 of them by run, one by pass, and that technically was the last play of the first half because a touchdown counts as a first down statistically, and penalties, they got one first down. Williams, boy, they wrapped him up. They saw him coming all, all the way that time and got him in the backfield. No chance he was going to get away from Jeff Condra. Well, that'll set up another third down situation. Nice big play by Condren. That's what uh, Kenny Mizell's defense needs to do. Either get a takeaway or a stop. Three downs and a, and a punt. Condren's not real good against the pass. And the Wolfpack defenders, uh, defensive coaches will admit that. But he's very good against the run. And the Wolfpack all, defense was able to wrap up Williams and the Arkansas State Indians to force a third down. One of the few times this afternoon that Williams has lost yardage. He loses four. It's now third and 14. Covington wants a timeout. They want to make sure whatever they're going to do is right, so they will take a timeout. We'll oblige and do likewise, reminding you once again our score with 10-28 remaining, Arkansas State 17, Nevada 14. Who's number one? Reno Jeep Eagle. With low prices on 94 Jeep Cherokees, classic Jeep Wranglers, or how about a new 94 Grand Cherokee? Reno Jeep Eagle, first in sales and service. Eat your heart out, Explorer. <laughs> When they say Reno Jeep Eagle is the number one dealer, I'm not surprised. Join our growing list of satisfied customers. Reno Jeep Eagle, you'll save more on meal. Yes, you will. Let's give this a try. Slots, blackjack, craps, roulette, keno. All right. Yeah, El Dorado restaurants. I'm getting hungry. El Dorado. El Dorado. It's a winner. A programming note on Monday here on News Channel 8 at 5.30. We've got the news with the team you know and trust. Then at 6 o'clock, a pretty good football game. 49ers against the Saints. Then right after the game, Monday night sports wrap. And that'll be Monday here on News Channel 8. Rob, a lot of people anguishing about this ball game with Nevada trailing, but after this play, I want to bring you a couple other scores that I think are going to have a quizzical look on your face after I talk about it. Covington to throw. A little throwback screen right side to Williams. Williams got away from a tackle. He'll be short of the first down. Nevada does their job, but look at this. We are in the fourth quarter. Boston College 31, Notre Dame 17. New Mexico State at home in Las Cruces 14, Utah State 6. And if, as we said, New Mexico State, if the Aggies can win that game against Utah State, they win the Big West title, strange as that may seem. Nice job here by the Wolfpack defense. Jim Jones made the sure hit and dropped Williams before he could get the first down. So on fourth and four, they'll punt it away to Overby. Richardson, right footer, got that one to turn over. Got a good high kick, Overby, plenty of room to run at this 13. Out to the 20, the 25, and forced out of bounds. So we have nine minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the ball game. And once again, we'll remind you, Arkansas State has led all the way. They're on top by three, 17-14. We'll be back to Jonesboro after this timeout. Decisions, decisions. You'll welcome them all at the rotisserie at John Esquagas Nugget. Famous for lunch and Sunday brunch, the rotisserie specialty nights are also a favorite choice. Monday is fresh fish night, Tuesday's chocolate night, Wednesday's rib night, and Friday's seafood night. 
Of course, any night gives you a wide selection of enticing entrees and delicious desserts. The Rotisserie Restaurant and Buffet, another great dining experience from John Esquagas Nugget. Hi, friends. Want to make a great investment on a used car truck? Jones West Ford is the place for you. Hundreds of used cars and trucks on sale. Take a look at these great buys. 1993 Mercury Cougar, only $12,479. 1988 Jeep Cherokee Laredo, only $89.79. 1992 Ford Explorer, only $15,979. At Jones West Ford, we have hundreds of used cars and trucks on sale. You only need $1 down, and we've got a great selection. Come see us. Jonesboro, Arkansas. Rob Nikoleski along with Dan Gusson. There's Jeff Horton on the sidelines and Paul Stewart is on the sidelines for us. Paul, what do you got? Uh, Brian Reeves has had a malign career as far as his attitude, but this kid is something else. Call the play and we'll continue this thought. First and 10, Wolfpack at their own 26-yard line. Vargas going exclusively to the air throws, but his receiver had slipped. Paul will go back your way. Brian Reeves not playing in this game because of his shoulder separation, but he is a coach on the field. He is encouraging his teammates every single time that they come off, giving them pointers, helping them out, and giving them a big pat on the butt. And I'll tell you what, he did almost get a celebration penalty even though he's not suited up. We laughed about that, but that's only because he, because he is one intense individual. There's another intense guy, Chris Vargas, who has thrown for 282 yards passing. He's looking to lead the Wolfpack to a 10th come-from-behind victory in his career. Complete at the 30-yard line to the 31. He'll be about five yards short of the first down. Catch made by Michael Stevens. Plenty of time, though, for the patented Vargas comeback. We're not even close to that area of the ball game. We have better than nine minutes to go. Nevada with a no-huddle offense, but they need a score. They trail by three. Mike Sr. and his injured ankles, the slot at the bottom of your screen. Vargas looks that way, now comes back off, still looking. Great protection. Gets away from a tackle by McDaniel, but can't get away from everybody. Vargas just didn't get any help from his receivers there. Sean Price was standing around. Sr. wasn't sure where to go. And by the time Vargas to try to find someone, he was wrapped up. Arkansas State with very good defense, good coverage, good pressure. Here's the end of the play. Vargas gets sacked. A borderline late hit, but number 81 from Arkansas State. That's Mike Mason. He's getting down and getting funky, and the Wolfpack's going to have to punt. Lucky he didn't get a flag. Murphy in single safety back near his 30-yard line. Avina with a low kick. Murphy's got room to return it from the 26. Good hit. And Arkansas State will have good field position as they get the ball in the 38-yard line. And field position is such an important thing for Arkansas State. For a ground control team against a highly talented team like Nevada that control the ball so much, what you want to do is grind the clock out, play field position. If you're going to make Nevada march and score a touchdown, make them go a long way. And they've done that so far in the second half. The last time the Wolfpack had the ball before that previous drive, of course, they started their own one-yard line. Bobby Blair made the stop. He got some help from Ryan Milliken. Covington will have it at his 38-yard line to start the series. And who else? Williams up the middle. Ran through one tackle. He gets near midfield, and they finally wrestle him down right at midfield. Nevada had a big stop against him last time when they threw him for a four-yard loss on second down. It's a familiar, him forever. a familiar theme to this game. Marquise Williams driving, and with less than eight minutes to go in this game, Arkansas State would love to have about a four- or five-minute drive culminating in a touchdown, and that could give Arkansas State a two-score lead. Lopez has uh, made a lot of stops, but you don't like your uh, strong safety to make a lot of stops. Great blocking by Arkansas State's front line. And yeah, they're opening some gaps. Now they try to go wide to Williams. Ran out of one tackle, but then Condra got over to get him. Jim Jones had a hand on him and kind of turned him sideways so Condra could get him. Yeah, Jim Jones makes the initial hit, but Condra has to run along the line of scrimmage, and he finishes him off. Jones slowed him down, and that's that's a big train to slow down. If you could, this guy gets ahead of speed, he's a tough guy to bring down. Give him 30 carries. So, you know, you talked about the hot tub. Well, he'll welcome that, I think, after this game. 30 carries for 188 yards. And you see the face of a very concerned coach with a team 7-4 and four, or 7-3, and uh, a three, hoping to go 8-3. and three. The 
in Johnny Covington to Marquise Williams running wide outside. Clayton Lopez hangs on, and boy, good thing he did. He got a ride for about 10 yards, but had he not hung on, the score would have been a little worse than it is right now as Marquise Williams just proving time after time that he is doing the job. Rob, interesting point. Arkansas State has not had a player of the week in the Big uh, West Conference all year long. You may be looking at the man right now, number 20. Yes, and no doubt about it, Clayton Lopez just hanging on for dear life, and, and Marquise Williams just driving. And Lopez really paid the price. He was just hanging on. That, that's like watching the Reno Rodeo and trying to watch a guy hang on to a, to a steer. Look at that, 204 yards. He's still out there. Might be his hands on his hip. Look at his helmet. Kind of a John Madden type player, isn't he? Definitely. He is th this guy's a gamer. He's, he's a real horse. And Clayton Lopez had to come out of the game after riding that horse. He's out on the sidelines. Arkansas State after that big run with a first down again at Nevada's 32-yard line. 17-14 is the score. We get a glance at the clock. It's moving 6.35 to go in the game. Somewhere the pack's got to make a big stop or a takeaway. Dominic Bousillon in to replace Lopez. Williams, tough running in the middle. Gets about two yards. Well, they're down at the 30-yard line. So at this point, it's a 47-yard field goal. And I'm thinking ahead, thinking, trying to think maybe what John Bobo's going through. He's got a good field goal kicker. And a field goal helps Arkansas State somewhat. It forces Nevada to have to score a touchdown to beat them. But, uh, but in many ways, it might be a good idea to go for the touchdown because Nevada's not going to go for a tie. Because a tie does the Wolfpack absolutely no good. The only meeting between these two schools before was decided by one point. 24-23. Why should this one be any different? Williams, right side. Some running room. Stretches it out, but he'll be short of the first down by about two yards. Marquise Williams, his running mate in the backfield, Barco Williams, you haven't heard his name but once this afternoon. Williams, a little counter. He gets a good block, and Jake basically just drives through guys. You know, That's you, Garnett Overby, who, just like Lopez, is hanging on for the ride. You can talk about tackling, and I think the Wolfpack tackling in the second half is much better than it was in the first half, but let's talk about the offensive line. We talked about them in our pregame show about how big they were, but they're maintaining their blocks, and the defensive guys can't get off them. The Wolfpack beat these guys in 85. Arkansas State trying to even the score today. Third and two. Williams will be dragged down about a yard short. There's a good tackle. Great tackle there by Darnell Hassan on a big play. It looked like it seems every time that Williams is able to break out to the outside, he goes in for for yard for uh, for a big gain. But Darnell Hassan, just like you said, Dan, early in the game, a lot of these Wolfpack players are trying to hit him high. You've got to hit him low. Hassan grabbed him around the ankles and drove him down, and now it's fourth down. And Bobo is not sending the field goal unit out. So Nevada made one stop against San Jose State a few weeks back on a fourth and short yardage. Can they do it again? 420 left. This one may preserve a win like that one did. And Covington wants a timeout. He was running out of time, so we will oblige. We'll go to the sidelines. 4-11 to go in the game. Arkansas State 17, University of Nevada 14. We'll be back to Jonesboro after this timeout. On the next American Journal, his wife kept a shameful secret hidden from him. And when he found out, his shock turned to violence. He expected to be shot and just put out of his misery. Now, his wife tells American Journal. He said that he forgave me, but he didn't forget. What he couldn't forget was his wife's picture on the cover of an X-rated video. I'm Nancy Glass. That's just one of the stories worth watching on the next American Journal. Monday night at 12.05, following Nightline on News Channel 8. If it's made with glass, go to the source. Custom Glass of Reno, supplying contractors and homeowners since 1952 with the finest products available. Natural wood sunrooms by Westview add character and vitality to any home. Create light and ventilate beautifully with roof windows and skylights from Velux. And for those who accept only the best, we install Colby & Colby fine wood windows and doors. Call Custom Glass at 329-4265 or stop by our new showroom on East 2nd Street. That's Custom Glass of Reno. 
Back in Jonesboro, Arkansas, here's all you need to know. Arkansas State up by three, 4-11 left, and Arkansas State has fourth and short. And they go with the wishbone, their short yardage formation. Williams right side's got that and more, but wait a minute, we have a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Well, let's see what this flag's all about. Uh-oh. Against the guys in blue and white. No one jumped offside, so someone must have lined up offsides. And, and Dan, there's 4.08 left, and Arkansas State gets Arkansas State gets four fresh downs. And now if you're Jeff Horton, you've got to start thinking about using your timeouts. The pack has three timeouts left as Arkansas State, with this great line surge, gets the first down from Marquise Williams. But with, uh, with such little time left, 4.08 left, and with the clock running, Jeff Horton's going to start thinking about maybe stopping the clock here. Nevada on the afternoon with 11 penalties for 80 yards. And, you know, interestingly enough, in this Big West Conference, there's a least penalized team. They're number 10 in penalties in the conference. Not today. Boy. And they ring up loud and large. Four minutes even to go in the game. Well, now the Wolfpack has to hold these guys here to a field goal. Because a touchdown give, will give Arkansas State a 10-point lead. And I don't even know if Chris Vargas can overcome that. Again, Williams met at the line of scrimmage. Condra was right there to stop and throws him back. And let's see if they use a timeout. That was a good call, Rob. You're absolutely correct. Nevada trying to preserve the clock. We'll take a timeout. So try slots, blackjack, crabs, roulette, keno. All right. Sportsbook. Let's go check out the line. El Dorado. El Dorado. It's a winner. Who's number one? Reno Jeep Eagle. With low prices on 94 Jeep Cherokees, classic Jeep Wranglers, or how about a new 94 Grand Cherokee? Reno Jeep Eagle, first in sales and service. Love the Grand Cherokee. Thanks, Reno Jeep. And the kind of attention you get at Reno Jeep Eagle, it's like, um... It's like you're one of the owners. Yeah, and that's important. Join our growing list of satisfied customers. Reno Jeep Eagle. You'll save more on mill. Yes, you will. Back at Jonesboro, Arkansas, I'm Rob Nikoleski along with Dan Gustin, and there is a very telling statistic, Dan. Marquise Williams, 213 yards rushing. Nevada, 67 as a team. And Nevada's been forced in the second half to go to the air almost exclusively, so that's why they don't have the yardage on the ground, but Williams has been, been the destroyer. Second and 12. He lost two last time. Covington wants to throw. Oh, I had a man open. Williams was open, wide open at the five-yard line, and Covington couldn't hit him with a... He couldn't hit him with a brick. Boy, I, I, I don't understand that, Dan. You've got Nevada in a situation where they're going to have to expend timeouts, and you've got a running back who's gained more than 200 yards, and why even risk a, a pass like that? Why even risk a pass? Keep giving the ball to Williams. Even if you have to settle for a field goal, make Nevada expend their timeouts, and then they'll have to go the length of the field, down by six. A, a field goal will do them no good. No further comment is necessary. You're absolutely correct. Now it's third and 12. They go on the ground. Williams again, far short of the first down. Nevada was sitting waiting on him. They used their second timeout. Well, Jeff Caldwell will come in and he'll try a field goal to give Arkansas State a six-point lead. A couple programming notes for you. First of all, we will not be able to join the UCLA-USC game in progress as soon as this Wolfpack game is over. We will not be able to do that, but if you may have noticed in the newspaper in Reno today, you will be able to pick up the game in certain cable outlets in your area, so check your cable listings on that. You might be able to pick up the USC-UCLA game if you're curious about that. Here in Jonesboro, though, the Wolfpack is down by three points to John Bobo's team. Rob, we haven't mentioned it this afternoon. Uh, 
from uh, Jonesboro because we were not in Reno when the, the press conference came about. But I will tell you personally, I'm very de delighted and very pleased that Chris Alt has made a decision to stay at the University of Nevada. All the talk and all the controversy about him maybe leaving and going to UNLV, and that certainly would have been their game. But uh, from our side, but really happy that he's staying in northern Nevada because, as he said, as I understand, he said, there's still a lot of things to do, and he's the guy to do it. Well, the Wolfpack has had Chris Alt as part of their program since 1975, and he's going to stick around. Now, as far as this game is concerned, it's fourth down, and Covington comes back into the game. Mm. Fourth and about 10 to go for a first down. So they're going to use as much of the clock as they can. 325 remain. Nevada's got to hold them. from a, They can gain anything but short of 10 yards, that's for sure. Nevada with a virtual nine-man front. Now they back off. Covington's arms hit and incomplete. So that will stop the clock. Now, talk about Magic Man. He's got better than three minutes with which to work, and that is more than enough time. Nevada, though, has got to dig deep and find something. They've got to find the winning attitude that they've had over these years, and they've got to regroup because now they need a touchdown. John Bobo's a great guy, and his team has done a terrific job today, but frankly, Dan, I am mystified by the play selection in these last three and a half minutes, of, or actually the last three or four plays. You have a guy who's running the ball great. He never touches the ball in the last three plays uh, of, of scrimmage. It gives Chris Vargas a chance with 319 to go when he's on his own 17-yard line. Yeah, and when Williams did get it, everybody was playing the run. They were stuffed up the middle, nowhere for him to go. Well, let's see what Chris Vargas can do. He's done it nine times previous. Throwing on the run. Wide open. He's got Senior out of bounds. Mike Senior on a crossing pattern came all the way across the field to the 34 yard line where he goes out. So he just doubled that yardage from the 17 to the 34. And he gets out of bounds. The Wolfpack has one timeout left. One precious timeout left. The Wolfpack up to the 33 yard line. I thought Vargas might run with the ball here and he barely got this throw off to Senior in time. Heavy pursuit. See Senior start inside and then break off the pattern against Crockett. But that's the guy, Crockett's been on him, and he's a tough guy to get rid of. Again, Vargas looking right. Michael Stevens hit immediately as he makes the catch. Good for about a five-yard gain. Boy, they're beating the drums across the way. Yeah, drums along the Mohawk as the Wolfpack offense has come back so many times with number 10, a quarterback. He's done it nine times. Can he end his Wolfpack regular season career with an even 10? There's one of the big guys he's got to use, Michael Stevens. Three-step drop. Throws over the middle. Sean Price with a catch just shy of the 45-yard line, which will stop the clock. That should be placed right at the 45, and they do. That's enough for the first down. So that'll stop the clock with 2.38 to go. 55 yards away from a score that most likely would win the ball game for the Wolfpack. But remember what happened with one second to go in the last play of the first half. Arkansas State threw a 54-yard pass for a touchdown. How big does that play look now? Vargas, 315 yards passing, but he needs a lot more. Going up the sideline for Price is incomplete. Nice coverage by Sammy Bell. Bell played that very well, kept Price to the outside. Yeah, getting back that very last play, if you just joined us in the second half, the last play of the first half, Arkansas State threw a long pass to Marquise Williams. The ball was deflected. It bounced into his hands. He broke two tackles and scored on the last play of the first half to give Arkansas State a 17-7 lead. Arkansas State has not scored in the second half, but the Wolfpack finds itself down by three with 2.26 to go. And there's a guy looking, holding his heart, and he has reason to. It's the kind of game that gives you cardiac arrest. Vargas, oh, Emmons got him from the left side. Emmons broke through, and he is their big guy. He has nine tackles for loss this year. And Carlos Emmons was on Chris Vargas before he could get rid of him. That's his second sack of this game, the seventh of the season, and the Wolfpack is going to call its last timeout with 2.16 to go. Emmons with the exclamation point. All the way back to their own 35-yard line. Nevada with a timeout, and the Indians of Arkansas State kneeling at about the 37. Not only do they want to get some air and regroup themselves, but they know if they can hang on for just two more plays, the first victory ever in this Big West Conference is theirs, and what a victory it would be. 
against a team that everybody across the country has said is unstoppable. John Bobo said this week, and I read a good story, by the way, in the Sage Brush. Neil Barron, I don't know him, but he wrote a good story. You know, you, you try to get all the information you can throughout the week about teams, and on the plane yesterday I was reading, and he had some interesting comment from John Bobo that he didn't know how they would stop this team, but Bobo's found a way to, to inspire and rejuvenate his guys because they've done a great job. As you look at 57-plus minutes, they have held the Wolfpack in check. Now they've got to do it for the remainder of this ball game. Yes, the Wolfpack doesn't have Brian Reyes. He's out in injury. Yes, they don't have Marcellus Prashan, but this is a team that averages 40 points a game. Arkansas State's done a terrific job. You have to take off your hats to John Bobo's club. Third and 20 from their own 35-yard line. Marcus, all kinds of time. He's got an open man. Price, nice catch, and he's down at the 36-yard line. That will move the chains. Watkins was there along with Crockett. They had him double teamed, but the 29-yard completion is more than enough for the first down. And Sean Price, look at him. Is he battle-weary? Is that blood coming out the side of his uniform? Maybe. Sean Price has not played a whole lot this season. He's not made many big catches because there's so many other talented wide receivers in front of him, but that was a big one there. Vargas to throw again over the middle. Release pass. It's complete to the big guy, Zeke Moore. He's inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. The clock's running with 1.50 to go. The pack out of timeouts. They're down to the 27-yard line. This would be a 44-yard kick. But the field goal does not do the pack any good. They're going, they need a touchdown. Yeah, they do. Boy, they, that music, that chant is still on. And Chris Vargas trying to rev up his own drums. Ball knocked down the pass. That'll stop the clock. Good play. Gary the House Jackson with a big left hand knocks it down and you get a good shot at the house from the back we haven't called his number much and you see his uniform isn't very very dirty well now you're you're in a kind of a ticklish position for Nevada because as you said the house knocks this ball down now it's third and short if you run the ball and you need to get the first down but if you run the ball the clock keeps running you get the first down quick snap and you kill the clock the only thing I guess you can do look at Vargas's numbers outstanding for him but Again, the scoreboard, that's the all-important deciding factor. They go for the first down. Zeke Moore's got it as he's just inside the 25-yard line. You're right, Dan. They've either got to run up the line of scrimmage and throw the ball down, or if they can hustle a play in, there's 123 to left. A no huddle, that helps them, of course. They're not going to throw the ball on the ground. Vargas is going to call a play. They have not started the clock. Now they do, 120 and counting. Again, looking for some magic. Come back to Michael Sr. That's complete, and he's down at the 17-yard line. He's not able to get out of bounds, though. 108 and counting. He does not get to the first down here marker either, so that's not going to stop the clock. Look at Sr. How game is he on that bad ankle? Barely able to get to the other side of the field, and yet he's still out there. Crockett comes over to cover him. Three wide receivers left of the formation. Mark is throwing up the middle. He's got Stevens. He's Touchdown. got it. Touchdown. Michael Stevens makes the touchdown catch of the year. Can you believe these guys? Can you believe these guys? The Magic Man, 10 times in his career. Can he hang on and get his 10th come from behind victory, just like the Utah State game? And Dan, this might be the same play that he threw to Michael Stevens Look to win Stevens the Utah State game. In traffic, Sammy Bell was there, put out an arm, couldn't get to him, and Michael Freeway Stevens Heading on down the ramp. Armando Avina will try to add the extra point to make it a 21-17 game. He pooches it up and good. 21-17 with 46 seconds remaining from Jonesboro, Arkansas. The University of Nevada on top. Ryan O'Donnell getting up. He's hurting a little bit, but that union, they've been going all afternoon, been outmanned sometime, but they're hanging in. But we get another look at Chris Vargas. The five-letter man, magic, and you know why. Michael Stevens. Look at Sammy Bell reaching out. Can't get there. Watkins can't get there. And there's Michael Stevens with a catch. Now Nevada, when they have kicked off this afternoon, they have squibbed it a couple times. Arkansas State. You know, you, you have to feel for these guys. Obviously, you're elated because the Wolfpack went on top. But they have played for four, uh, 59 minutes and 14 seconds they have been on top Vargas has completed 36 of 55 passes for 368 yards but how about those Indians a little disconsolate right now 
but the Wolfpack, so used to winning all those years under head coach Chris Alt, and now Jeff Horton taking over, and the winning has not stopped. The tradition continues. And they have found a way. Derek Austin, the deep man, he is back at his five-yard line. But it's the old story. When you know how to win, you find a way to win, and that's what the Wolfpack has done this afternoon. Avina will kick off. Vargas in the second half completing two-thirds of his pass, 67%, 22 of 33 for 240 yards. But Avina, who has not kicked off, he's had that bum leg. They put a sleeve on it. They've taped it. They've wrapped it. He said, nah, just put something on and keep it warm. I'll gut it out. He's got a torn quadricep. He will kick off. Kicks it low and on the ground. Out at the 23-yard line, it's picked up. Achavi, the first, or make it Crawford, the first to get down there and make the stop. Austin Tinsley picked it up, and now a team that doesn't throw well will try to go a great distance. They have to go 75 yards in 42 seconds. You see Tinsley trotting off. Nevada again using only two minutes and 33 seconds They go 11 plays 83 yards remember they started at their 17 yard line and the freeway from the magic man makes the difference in the game 21 17 Nevada on top and is it going to be a lot of fun flying back if they can maintain this lead you bet it is Covington fakes the draw throws underneath complete at the 30 yard line not enough that's their tight end Clark McBride McBride jumps up quickly. The Indians trying to keep it going. They've got a distance to go. They've got about 66 yards to go. They've got 20 seconds to do it. Covington again. The run fake. He throws over the middle. Got a man open at midfield. A big catch at the Wolfpack 47-yard line. That is Reginald Murphy. So that will stop the clock. The 20-yard completion of Murphy. The chain's a little slow moving down the sideline in front of the Wolfpack bench across the way. You get a good shot at Reginald. He's their big receiver, the leading receiver coming into the game with 19 catches. Averaging 14-2, as I said earlier. That's a 20-yard grab. Covington again, throwing. He's got a man open at the Wolfpack 30-yard line. That's Austin, Derek Austin. Nevada playing a prevent. That'll stop the clock. We have no time. The game is over. The University of Nevada with the miracle comeback, or did they? Wait a second. The officials are asking them to go to the sideline. We may have a couple seconds remaining. Rob Nikoleski is going down to the sideline, hoping that he can get an interview. He's got a long way to go, though. We are 14 stories in the air. But Rob will be down there, and we must have a couple seconds remaining. Let's see if we can get the call. John Bobo legislating on the sideline. There is no time on the clock, but there obviously will be one more play. The official saying that when they got the first down, the clock should have been stopped. Again, I'm presuming all that, but there would not be there would be no other reason why the teams would still be on the field and they wouldn't be shaking hands right now. John Bobo, the first year coach. Tough season for him, but boy, so close. You ride the the roller coaster of elation up and down this afternoon. His team led for 59 minutes and 14 seconds. The referee came over. When you saw him coming to the sideline, he was going to the phone to call the timer. They put three seconds back on the clock. On the scoreboard, there are three seconds, so it's likely that the Indians will only get one more play. And Jeff Horton across the way, a sigh of relief as he tugs at his hat and scratches the cranium area because it was not easy. It was not pretty, nor was it easy this afternoon for the Wolfpack, but hold everything, it's not over yet. With no time on the clock, the Indians scored at the end of the first half. Does lightning strike twice? Not on a beautiful day like this in Jonesboro. We've had a great trip and our crew has been spectacular today. Every shot, every play that we wanted, they got for us and for you, and I hope you enjoyed it. 21-17, so the Indians have to score a touchdown if they want to win. Field goal does them no good. They have one play left with three seconds. Look at that. The flag's limp. There is no win. And John Covington, the quarterback. Scrambles around. He throws. Throws in the end zone. He's got a man. Murphy. Touchdown. He got it. Reginald Murphy with the catch. What a play. The Indians have done it. 
Reginald Murphy got beyond the secondary in the Wolfpack moments ago, riding the roller coaster of elation on their side, how quickly it has slipped away. Look at the pile in the end zone across the way. The Wolfpack players stunned with their helmets in their hands. They can't believe it. Some of them prone on the surface. Unbelievable. In Jonesboro, the way it ends, they reset the clock with three seconds, and the Indians find a way, and there is Jeff Horton. you got to feel for the man. Look at Tom Matter. They want to find out if he's okay. He is just heartbroken. We've got a flag on the field, but I'm sure the touchdown will stand. As you look across the way, Jeff Horton, what a bitter pill his team had fought back, and they had come all the way back. And then they go down to defeat 23 to 21 on a John Covington to Reginald Murphy touchdown pass. So they will try the extra point. They try to clear the field, but let's get another look at it. Covington. Had a step up in the pocket as Washington put some pressure on. Momentary lost the handle. Then he threw a perfect strike. Murphy, at the deep recesses of the end zone, makes the catch beyond the coverage. Look at that. A foot inside. He makes sure he gets that right foot down. The band is on the field. Everybody's on the field. Are they going to try the extra point? Murphy, again, beyond Chapman. Touchdown, Indians. They have won their second time this year. Look at... Covington again. He doesn't even see it. He goes down after the ball is thrown, but perfectly thrown. Wow. The band goes to the sideline. Reginald Murphy, a play he'll never forget, a catch he will never forget. Just a freshman, five foot eight. Look at the celebration. Derek Austin, you're going to beat him to death. Nevada not even sure they want to line up for the extra point. With the penalty in the celebration, it'll be a long one, but it doesn't matter. The outcome is, is determined. The celebration in the end zone, 15 yards, and look at Steve Bryant. He can't believe it, and I think there are very few other people that can. But the soldier that he is puts his helmet on. He's ready to go one more time. Everybody is on the sideline now. They've separated the teams. But how the roller coaster can go up and down in 46 seconds. Nevada scores. It looks like it's theirs. Jeff Horton on the sideline. He just can't believe what he has seen. I think few others can. The extra point attempt is just going to be down. The Indians don't care. They don't care. They're going to win 23 to 21. That's all they care. A rousing upset. Nevada will not be part of the bowl picture in the Big West Conference. Their chances to go to Las Vegas Bowl are gone, so we will take a timeout. We will return to Jonesboro right after this. Right after Monday Night Football, some people like to rap. We're back. Yeah, baseball's going down in popularity. That's hogwash. We need Kennesaw Mountain Land. Who's going to beat him now? Ooh. Oh, I'll boy. start with you, Larry. Join me, Rob Nikolevsky, for Monday Night Sports Wrap, right after Monday Night Football. You can agree with us. You can disagree with us. Just watch us on News Channel 8, the team you know and trust. It looks like these cold winter temperatures are here to stay for a while. Hi, I'm meteorologist Tony Shelton of News Channel 8. You can make sure that all area kids across northern Nevada and the Sierra stay warm this winter by donating your outgrown but still wearable jackets to the seven diamonds cleaners listed on the screen. They'll clean the jackets free of charge and make sure that they're given to children who really need them. Warm hearts means warm friends. Well, we are back in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and what a celebration they're gonna have tonight in this community of 50,000 because they were down and out with 46 seconds to go. They come back, you see the final score, 23-21. I was up in the booth, Rob Nikoleski was on the sideline when that all occurred. Rob, the emotions were terrific. I'm gonna throw it down to you. What a broadcast. Remember tomorrow at 10.30 at the El Dorado, there'll be the awards banquet for all these players that have had such a great year. They end up seven and four. Rob, what a way to end it. It was an incredible way to end it. You think about all the great comebacks that Chris Vargas was, had led the Wolf Pack to. He'd done it nine times before. It looked like he had a tenth. But that's the strange thing about sports. Things 
somehow even out. One thing goes one way, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get incredibly unlucky. And in this case, the Wolfpack allows a last play touchdown. And that's how Chris Vargas, Brian Reeves, Tom Matter, that's how these guys end their careers. Careers that were absolutely fantastic. Let's take a look at the play of the game where we wrap things up as Arkansas State on the very last play from scrimmage. Covington, who'd had his trouble throwing all game long, but all he needed was one good completion on the last play of the game. He finds his man for a touchdown, and Arkansas State comes away with an incredible three two-point victory over Nevada, winning 23 to 21. That'll wrap up our coverage here from Arkansas State, and that'll wrap up our coverage of Wolfpack football for 1993. No Las Vegas Bowl, a 7-4 record at the end of the Chris Vargas era. That's it here from Jonesboro, Arkansas. For Dan Gustin, Paul Stewart, and myself, Rob Nikoleski, have a good night.